Hello guys and today we are going to build a cobblestone generator thingy and, and I th it's this design's pretty nice because you're gonna save pistons and you're only gonna need a hopper here it's pretty simple and this isn't a tutorial, I'm actually going to just build this off of memory and see what we could do. <laughs> and that's the best part about it, it's quite fun that way. Keep the ideas fresh here. So, I believe I'm going to need some cheap resources like cobblestone. We're first going to build the water pan, which would be... 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... I think it's 11 by 11 because you need 9 in the inside, so. Yep, like that, and then we just fill the rest. And what this will do is it's going to make a very nice template here for the water. Yep. yep one second. Yeah, whatever. I loaded up a new world and the chunks are just loading in so that makes sense I don't care though so yeah as you can see it's quite simple to set up what I like to do usually I build this in skyblock um, in some situations it depends on your materials mainly this is better for survival as you have everything actually in skyblock what I would mostly do mostly I say because got mob farms we can use a creeper powered one it's a little easier to get a hand on that so anyways that's kind of off topic we're trying to build a cobble generator so we get the base plate set up and then we're gonna go to the edge go one two three four we just gotta identify seven blocks or so not really into the seven block um, size here but it should be fine and from here, we're going to count 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And 13 because that's the push limit. And this just is a safety feature so you don't break the farm. Now you're going to go like this. Leave a gap. Do another 3. So what this is going to allow us to do is push a whole line of cobble to the end here with just one piston wall instead of having a double. This in turn might be slower, but the returns would possibly be the same. So, yeah, I like this idea better because I'm saving my pistons, I'm getting cobble. It's just, and plus at the furnace array, this might be more manageable depending on how much um, items you're spending there. I believe five blocks will be tall enough. <laughs> There's a certain blast radius uh, TNT can do, but I'm not too sharp on that. So I think the next step is, oops, I'm just gonna put obsidian here, like so, just to have the TNT fall. Then I'll go up 12 here. Or something like that, we just gotta get rid of that um, TNT range, so one. That's the TNT range, so you could put the dispenser just a little bit outside of it. Oh. Oh. Let me. Let's... Mm. Alright, there we go. Like that. Should be. <laughs> should be good enough. So there we go. That. That'll drop our TNT. Um, I'm gonna use endstone for the top part just because it's a high blast resistance. I'm, I'm pretty sure cobble will work fine. I'm just thinking this will be fine. You can actually put a block there because the TNT will actually go right through it. If you didn't know that. Um, we're just gonna put a stack of TNT in there for now. And then I could just demonstrate that it should possibly be safe. So yeah, see TNT drops fine. And the end stone's fine for all, all we care, basically. Let's just see that again. Yep, it's not, it's not a, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. So now we're good. 
Um, I think we should set up the kind of the wall right here, like a so, and this will just um, prevent. I don't know. It just just looks cleaner in general to have the the block edge thing there. You probably want to use a different type of block so you don't get mixed up, but this will do it for me. And you could fill in this because that's not going to be pushed at all. Okay, so now we got the end here. Um, we just put a redstone torch there for now. And we're actually going to go ahead and do some more calculating. Just count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. And then, yeah, you place a piston on the fourteenth, so... There you go. It's right there. Should push all the way. And this is gonna be our our main pusher here. It's gonna get those um, thingies going for what we need. So there you go, just five. Now, um, we're just gonna do um, singular speed for now. I have done a double speed where I had two generators on each side and that did the job, but I think singular speed will be fine for this, this little let's build. So we're just going to make a, a column setup. You want it to be just above the piston right here, sort of. And you put a hole there, and of course when you drop water, it's going to be nice and clean. Now, as for the lava, I'm just going to use maybe a cobble wall. We could just see the lava, you know, make it look cool. So we'll just do this, and that'll be good to, um, enough to hold that lava, and it'll look pretty cool so just put lava on every single block up five and there we go there's something going on I don't know what's going on with this frame rate right now that's not normal I usually have the frames pretty good I wonder if my computer's just acting weird because I left it on for a while I don't know it's, that's weird I'm just like gonna ignore it for now. <laughs> ah, I should probably restart my machine sometimes. All right. Anyways, um, that's off topic. Now we got this piston layout here. I think your best option is just to get slabs and then put it every so block so you could do this. And make sure your slab tower is facing out that way because if you had it side by side, it wouldn't do much of anything so that's all the slab towering you need and the nice thing is you can then just put a nice thing like a so that doesn't need to be a solid block but I just like how the redstone trails up it's nice and the principle behind this is quite simple so you turn it on turn it off puts a new lava source there and you repeat that so yeah, you know how that works, quite simple. Now, we need to do the next thing, which is gonna be a monostable setup with these redstone repeaters. Um, and also, for simplicity, we're not gonna have precise timing setups. As a matter of fact, we're just gonna have it set up like this. And just uh, get it like that, go in there. Okay, um, also, let's, let's just get a different block for um, texture reasons. I'll just grab... I think I'll just grab this. This will be fine. We'll just, we're just going to put that there. This is where we're going to lay our redstone. And power everything, of course. And a nice thing we could do here is just put a little half slap tower in between the two. It's a good way to use space. To me, it seems that way so far. So here we go. Let's just get that going. There we go. All the way through, looking good. And we're just, for now, I personally am just gonna put 12 repeaters in some weird fashion. <laughs> we'll see what we can do here. No, five. 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We could cut that short by 3. So let's just go here by 3 and then we could just take this back. Uh, probably actually by 1 because we don't want to decrease those blocks too much. See, that's already 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's 13. Um, we can also just do that and just save my redstone dust. Do that for now. I'll put on full delay. And what we simply do is we just um, launch the machine a couple times and then we just kind of measure the, the explosion time that way. It's very safe and easy to manage that way. Um, yeah. Alright, so that's what it's looking like right now. Completely funny mess. Let's go over here. Um, what I, I guess I like to use simple clocks. You could make a pistonless mod of stable. If I remember correctly, we can just put something like this. So, there you go. So that'll be your pistonless mod of stable. Let me show you how it does its thing. See, it goes on and off real quick. And I think if you have two, it's, nope, it is three, so yeah. Um, to save, uh, actually we'll be good on, yeah. Um, if I reverse this, it'll save us some. Uh, I don't really care. I mean, at this point in the game, you probably got this stuff to build this machine. And all that goodness, let's see. If I just do, you yeah, probably want to put a redstone torch there since it has to be inverted. Now it'll work, so if I were to, oop, right, rest repeater, Why? there you go, works like a charm, oh, except when it doesn't. <laughs> I guess it's, yeah, it's pretty time-based. Okay, I think if I just do something like this, we'll be good. So it's just a simple clock. Um, I think this is too slow, but let's see. Yeah, we can cut back on a thing. Might even be able to cut back on two. Okay, what happened here? Oh, right, the timed redstone. Good, so that worked. It seems the timing's just right. And um, the nice thing about this is we could toggle it on and off, so that's quite good. So, as you can see, those two functions work with just the one lever, and the redstone's pretty standard, as you can tell. Um, the next step um, is actually almost, it's pretty much the last step to a TNT blow-up thing. We just need a torch tower here to send a signal up, and this signal's going to control this, of course. And we want our TNT bit up here to explode every so often. So I'm thinking we're going to have a timer set to 7 blocks. Which means we actually might need it. one more hopper. I apologize. I'm just trying to make it work here. Usually right here is where I like to add the, the kind of timer you would need. So for the timer here... It's simple because we just put actually a block and then your dropper and you would have your hopper here and also on the side is where you would put about seven, eight repeaters. I'm going to go with eight or as many as I guess I'll put seven or eight um, just like that. This will control the type of delay. I guess I have to have seven exactly because I'm using a comparator. One, two, three. There you go, seven. So if this were to blink seven times, we would have it set up so it prepared the final explosion, kind of. Right, 
right, so we actually don't do it there. We need to um, grab a signal out of this dropper somehow. So I'm actually kind of debating to myself if I should just um, rearrange the redstone here a bit. Put that there and just rewire this. Let's see. If we were to... Yeah, if I could back this up, it might be actually easier. So we would have it set up this way. This is fun. I like to just build on the fly like this. It helps your helps your thinking process. Alright, so this should be fine. Oh, careful. I think that'll do it. So three and then four on the way back. Oh, careful now. <laughs> Gotta be on full delay here. Yep, and that can be like that. Alright, so... Yeah, we've basically got seven long delays and then the short 1.5. <sighs> I could be more exact, but there's no point. Um, actually, we don't need that. What we need is a inverter signal because what we're doing is we're powering this on every so often. Now comes the fun part. Can actually go ahead and just um, let this thing kind of go on a a little, you know, you know what I mean. You just have this thing run once it gets into its. Um, there you go. It's pretty simple, honestly. So yeah, that's just gonna trigger this tower here. I think it already... Oh, actually it didn't because... No, actually it, it should have. But it didn't. I'm thinking it's because... Ah, that's right. Um, I can move the torch over to another position. Okay, I see. There we go. Now I can't do that flashiness nonsense. Um, I am going to... Yep, there you go, it went on this time. I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple of cobbles. And just take more as a matter of fact, and we're gonna see what happens. Because we wanna do our measure. Yep, see that's what happened, but now comes the measurement phase. So obviously it's too late, so what we do is we just kinda estimate, okay, maybe it's taking off eight ticks, you know? And then what we would do, is we would just go over here and steal some cobble, put it back, and the next time it goes around, we could see if it um, blows up properly. Once it does, we'll fill in the rest of this explosion area. I always do this in survival since I can't remember the specifics sometimes. Okay, it was a little too early still. So I'm thinking we could take off or not add, we want to take off a tick, so I'll do that. And I'm gonna do the same thing again. Just, just you know, subtract, add there, um, have it explode again, and hope that we get the proper measurement soon, you know? Okay, still too early. I think we're just about a tick early, so I can. Maybe it's too early. Maybe. Okay. Alright, so I'm just gonna break this by hand here and then I'm gonna go up and do the reset process again. Yep, just in time. Oh, uh, you know, I'm doing something wrong here. I'm. It's going early, so I should delay it. I'm thinking it's just like that. Four. Alright. Let's go ahead and break these. You would just mine it with your pickaxe and restart. Or if you stick to the end of this, you can get the proper timings since I'll just read them off as we check it out. So yeah, you don't have to just do this. I just like to 
since I have not planned this. Here we go. It's gonna go off again. We're gonna see what happens. Just, it's like one tick early. Just gotta get that one delay in there. Yep. Alright. As you can see, it's hard for me to keep up with the device, but <laughs> we, we won't have to once it's going. Alright. I think this is good. I'm not too sure. Mm, still feels a bit too early. Just a little. You, you see that it's early too, don't you? What's gonna happen is we want things to blow up all at once. Because we're making block 36, which is a low blast resistant type block. And also you get a 100% drop rate from any explosion, from what I could see. Um, still feels, maybe it's too early still. Might just be me being crazy, because might have to use a different type of timing. For all I know. <laughs> okay. I love this testing thing. Even though it can be annoying to most. Let's see. There we go. So there we go. We've got the right explosion. So there's the machine in true functionality. Let's go ahead and just look at the delay here. So the delay is full. This is just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So it's 13 repeaters, except one of them is set to just a one. That's all. Pretty simple to remember that. It's like the odd duck. You see. Okay, so yeah, that it's absurd. You get quite a bit of um, cobble per explosion. As a matter of fact, it, you get about two stacks and a half, I believe. Actually, three stacks. So around a little, little under three stacks per explosion with just the one pusher there. Now I'm gonna use endstone. Oh no, that's not endstone. That's lava. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so. Now you can add more features to this so it doesn't get stuck, such as, oh, if the TNT ran out, then I could turn off the farm. The way I do that is by just adding a counter down there with the redstone, and you can set it to any turn off state you want. It's kind of good. But I'm not going to do that. This was supposed to be a simple let's build. So let's just build it up and make it pretty and all that, I think. Yeah, it's supposed to be pretty chill. Hopefully I haven't been going too fast. So yeah, look at that. Amazing. Now this might be an issue. If this is an issue, I suggest just to cut the corners out here and you'll be fine. That's not a big deal. So that's what I did to fix mine a while back. So I just cut the corners off. Seems to be fine. It's only like, you're only missing out on like 15 or so blocks. It's not a lot. Now, if you want to be fancy, you can lift this up and precisely drop the TNT in midair and explode it instead of having the obsidian. But for simplicity, I just put the obsidian there because it's easy to get that stuff. Just toss a lava bucket on top of a cobble block, then throw water, and boom. You've got your obsidian without the diamond pickaxe. Although, you're gonna have a diamond pickaxe probably or something. You don't need endstone here, just get a high blast resistance like cobble. I just trust endstone more, personally. Um, and plus it's, it's a decent texture, I mean I can I can like put nice corners you see and just kind of make it boxed in. It's just, it's all to prefer, it's really all to preference. 
So yeah. Um, there you go. I made this farm design about a year ago or so. So I mean it's eh, partially new, not so much. So yeah, as you can see, seven blocks is like around enough because you'll have these sticking out or whatnot. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Yeah. I'm, I think that was left over from the last blast, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, that's good. Very good. I like this. So, um, if this helped you any, you can give a like or something like that. And <laughs> even dislike if you thought this farm was very bad. I mean, all opinions to be shared here. And there you go. Have a good day. And I'll see you on another video, maybe. Actually, the truth is I don't see you because um, you're just a watcher. I'm... <laughs> It's kind of funny how people say I'll see you later. All right.